another episode of Relics Radio. This is a family-friendly show, so the entire family can join us as we talk metal detecting, relic, and treasure hunting. You can also call into the show at 270-495-0315 or join in the chat and post any questions or comments you might have. Relics Radio is also syndicated on the Cutting Edge Radio Network and is broadcast around the world. You're listening to Relics Radio of Southern Kentucky. And you are listening to another episode of Relics Radio. I've been running around here like a chicken with my head cut off, and I sure am glad to see some people jumping in the chat because I didn't even know if we were live. We had a uh, catastrophic event right before the show here. We've lost uh, complete Internet. I'm running the uh, show computer off of um, my phone and uh off off of a phone and uh then i'm also going to link in our guest on uh on skype on my phone so their audio quality might not be as good but we're going to get through this show we've never missed a show uh in the almost three years that we have uh, been running this and i sure didn't want to do it tonight it, it won't uh it won't be the same but uh and i'll lose chat here after a while because i normally use the second computer to uh, watch the chat and the skype and everything we're not going to be able to take calls tonight because i have both of them linked up and uh, there's no way on a mobile device that you can merge callers that are coming in so we apologize for that but you know what? We uh, were very lucky here in uh, southern Kentucky, and uh, my family is very lucky as well. As most of you know, there was a major uh, tornado outbreak, a tornado set down at Nashville. It went through Mount Juliet, where my daughter lives, and it went through Cook- Cookville, uh, covering Davidson County, Wilson County, and Putnam County, 50-mile-long path. The nation's most intense in three years, and right now there are 25 confirmed dead, and uh, we still have uh, people that are missing. And that came very close to my daughter's house, and uh, she actually called me. This this is the third time that uh, they've gone through a tornado, and she has called and stayed on the phone uh, with her and her family through the event. And, uh, you know, as as a parent, I cannot tell you how hard that that is to be an hour and a half away from uh, one of your children. And uh, I could hear the television in the background said it's now it's just now coming to Highway 109, and that's where they live. And then she said our power is off. And I don't know. It, uh, you know, uh, a lot of thankful prayers and everything that uh, they made it through. We have people that we know that we're not as lucky, and so uh, we're lucky tonight, and I can't complain over this. And by the way, too, uh, <clears throat> we reach out to everybody that has the coronavirus. Uh, there's a case now in Tennessee, in Williamson County, around Franklin, Tennessee, and I'm sure that this thing is going to spread, and so we are just, uh, you know, our hearts go out, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody that will be be affected, either by the tornadoes or this coronavirus or whatever. But anyway, I uh, want to welcome everybody uh, tonight. Uh, on Spreaker that are listening live. We want to welcome our syndicated listeners on the Cutting Edge Radio Network, and we want to welcome everyone that will be picking up the archive. No matter where you get your podcast, we will be there. We are worldwide, and so we want to welcome them as well. And without further ado, I want to get into tonight's show. Uh, we have Jenny and Steve of Trip and Dive. Hey, guys, welcome to this makeshift radio show. Hello, we're happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm I'm very very happy to have uh, have both of you, and been real excited over this show. And then right, you know, just uh, as I told you guys, just uh, an hour before uh, everything went down, and I just been scrambling around. But we'll get through it. We're optimistic, aren't we? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, must go on. Yeah, yeah, there is. And, uh, you know, it, it could really be a lot worse. Uh, by the way, guys, I've got their uh, YouTube link in the description, uh, Trip and Dive. I also have their Facebook. Uh, but if you just put Trip in Dive in uh, your Google search or whatever engine that you use to search with, you're going to find them. And uh, you're going to be impressed, I think, with what they do. I was, and so I reached out to them. Uh, and Steve, I'm, I'm going to start with you tonight. Why don't you just tell us how you got into all of this uh, scuba diving and everything? What prompted you to do that? <laughs> so I started scuba diving about five years ago, and I, I just got the bug. And um, my brother-in-law certified me, and he has, he has a post that he works. And, and I just I moved up the ranks with him. I'm a dive master. We help certify other um, people. We, we help a lot of youth get certified that normally wouldn't do it. And, I, and it's just, it's something that I love. Being underwater, it's, it's a meditative thing for me. So just, you know, you can, all you hear is your bubbles and just breathing in and out and, and seeing just the beautiful, beautiful reefs and, and the animals that are under, under the water. It's just, it's just awesome. And so I really wanted my whole family to get into it. So I you know, started with my wife and got all the kids certified. And so every every year we, we try and do some sort of a dive trip where we're, we're going out as a family. And, and Jenny had a great idea as, as we're going out. She's like, let's, let's start making some fun with this. And so that's where the idea of treasure hunting came around. So we started figuring out how to hide treasures, either underwater or on hikes in different areas. And, you know, just, just kind of bring people along with us and have fun. So that's really kind of where it all started from. And I just, I, I, I could live underwater if, if it were possible. <laughs> I, just, I love it. I could too. It's just uh, the weightlessness is uh, is what just amazes me. I mean, it's, it's the closest thing that I will ever come to to being in outer space because you're just absolutely yeah. weightless and, and everything is so tranquil. So, Jenny, I guess it's Steve's fault that you're a scuba diver, right? Uh, totally. I don't think I would have chosen to do scuba diving if it weren't for him. Are you glad that you did uh, now, though? Yeah, it took me quite a while because even snorkeling, I was a little bit claustrophobic. Um, I I hate tasting salt water. So even my first time snorkeling, I think we were in Hawaii and we were out there, we got past the wave, and so it was kind of calm, but I swallowed some water because when you're snorkeling, that sometimes, you know, when it comes down the tube, and then I'm coughing and throw it, like almost throwing up, and I'm like, <laughs> gonna drown. <laughs> so, like, I, it took me so long to even get used to snorkeling, so when he presented the idea of, we need to get scuba certified, and, and I'm pretty adventurous anyway, so I was... I just thought, you know what, okay, I'll try it, and so I, even though it's scary, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it, and I think the scariest part of scuba diving was getting certified, because you have to take off your goggles underwater and then put them back on and blow the water out, right. and I think that was terrifying to me, but once I was over that, I think it, it took a couple scuba trips to where we were diving three or four t um, times a day. I think it was in Cozumel a couple years ago, and we were we were doing three to four dives a day. By the fourth day, I finally got to where I was like, okay, I get it, because before I was just on the heels of a scuba master who would take us, our, our guide, yeah. and I would just be breathing, reminding myself to breathe, and be like, okay, there's only 30 minutes left. <laughs> okay, there's only 20 minutes left. I would just survive the dive. And so once I started looking around and, and finding things, and I think it, it took even us going through little swim-throughs of the coral reef um, and then a ship dive going inside, I'm like, oh, this this is really cool. So it just took, it took me a while. <laughs> and now I get it. 
it's really fun. I, I, I even venture away from the guide a little bit now and come back. So <laughs> I'm I'm getting more adventurous in my scuba diving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you were talking about in the uh, certification. Uh, I studied and studied and studied and aced the the written test on on that. And, uh, you know, the thing that really bothered me as well was, you know, uh, taking your mask off and clearing it and taking your regular, having your regulator taken out of your mouth and, and then do the lean thing and stretch your arm out and bring your regulator back. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I practiced all of that uh, and uh, prior to going for the certification and felt, you know, relatively confident in everything. And uh, then we got down, uh, we did ours in Nashville, and uh, got down there, and the guy said, well, the first thing is going to be a swim test. And I said, what do you mean a swim test? And he said, yeah, you gotta, you got to swim, uh, I think it was 200 yards. I said, I don't know if I can swim 200 yards or not. He said, well, if you can't, you can't dive, you know. And he said, I don't care how you do it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I swam conventionally there for a while, and then uh, uh, finally I just turned over on my back and just used my legs and kept a good breath in you know and uh, finally got back to the starting point there the final lap and i said whoo that about killed me he said you ain't done yet and i said what do you mean ain't done <laughs> he said uh he said now you got to tread water for 15 minutes and, and he said i don't care how yeah. you do that so i just laid back and floated on it so yeah there's a lot of stuff but yeah. but you know once you once you get it done and then you get up under the water it's just a completely different world uh, completely isn't it mm-hmm. yeah. yeah you mentioned something about um it's the closest thing to being an astronaut right i think that was when it clicked for me we were doing a night dive in, in cozumel and and we were just you know with flashlights you couldn't see anything but what what your lights on and it really felt like i was in space it really so that reminded me of that it is like floating in space it's yeah. kind of cool yeah and it's uh you know, I'm a little heavier than I would like to be, and uh, since since uh, I had to do the swim test, I came back home, and I'm uh, a member of the wellness center here, and three times a week, I am, <laughs> I'm swimming a mile uh, a day, so oh, <laughs> three days a week, so uh, I could go back and ace the swim test now, <laughs> you know, but I, I was I, I was out of shape, but just, just the weightlessness of all that. But you guys, uh, the thing that, that really impressed me is that, and Jenny, I think that this was your idea, you put a different twist on the family dives, didn't you? Yes. In what way do you mean? Well, I mean, the the treasure part of it. Was that your idea to do that? Yes, because Steve was wanting to document all of our um, diving, and there's so many videos out there, and it's nice to give um, referrals to places and, and try different places and, and give your feedback. And I I like adventure and just making it a little bit more fun. So I thought kind of like the geocaching to where you give directions and then you take the whatever's inside the treasure box and leave it. And as far as we could tell, there wasn't anything like that underwater. And so we decided that we would do that. But because it's hard to get a coordinate in the ocean underwater, we just have put like landmarks or um, different kinds of clues and then we always have like a guide with us that knows that when we um, schedule to go do the dive, we have a guide with us. And so they know where it is. So we can send people to that company, the guide that will help them find it too. But we have pretty good directions if you were to go and find it. And the other part is since we don't, we live in the desert and we're not like super close to an ocean. So um, we try to travel a few times a year to go do dives. But in the meantime, we have a lot of hikes around where we live and in the state we live. And and so when we can't go diving, we have also done, like, gone and hide hidden treasures on hikes around just Arizona or um, Utah, wherever we're, we are visiting. Right. So it's kind of fun just to find different places to, to do it. 
Yeah. Uh, and I want to talk to you about some of those uh, spots because I watched uh, literally all of you guys' videos and uh, was really <laughs> impressed. I want to talk about each one of them and what I liked about them and, and get you uh, get you to elaborate, elaborate a little bit more. But first, we need to run a commercial, and we'll be right back. I'm excited to announce that Tim Henderson of Murray Branch Outdoors has rejoined Relics Radio as a sponsor. As a multi-line dealer, Tim carries several brands of detectors and accessories, and he's ready to serve all of your metal detecting needs. I'll give you his contact info in a minute. So why did Relics Radio go back to Tim Henderson as our dealer sponsor? Three very important reasons. First, I often hunt with Tim, so I know firsthand that he uses what he sells, and he prides himself with great customer service and support. Second, Tim goes the extra mile in helping the new detectorist determine exactly what they need to get started. He will not try and sell you some high-priced product if that's not what you need. And, at the same time, Tim can serve the seasoned detectorist with their upgrades or new product questions. And finally, Tim won't leave you hanging after the sale. He's just a phone call away for any questions or specialized training needs. So, you can call Tim directly at 615-948-4611 or you can email him at tjhenderson.com at comcast.net and as most of you know tim is uh, a very good friend of mine and a fellow diver uh with me as well and we're looking forward to uh summer coming along and getting in dale hollow which is a reservoir and there are towns that are underwater there and uh, we've done a lot of mapping and we're just ready to go and uh, and i see that tim said hello i'm just in the house so uh welcome tim we just ran your commercial and there are about 500 people waiting to buy a metal detector from you but we've got jenny and steve on the line of uh trip and dive and uh the one that really really impressed me is the lake pleasant uh dive that you did <laughs> and uh do yeah. you know do you know why it impressed me can you guess the skeletons. The skeletons. <laughs> the skeletons. There, and and you guys tell her, tell the listeners what what we're talking about. All right. So, Lake Pleasant is um, it, it's a fairly clear lake here in Arizona, and that's where a lot of um, certifications happen. Um, and so, a lot of divers after they've gotten certified, they've gone back and they, they put little mementos in that area. And so, it's kind of built into an, an area where a lot of divers like to go back, see what's new, what's there. Um, but someone, I'm not sure who it was, but um, there's a card table down under the water. Depending on the time of the year, it's either at about 60 feet or it's about 40 feet. And there's four fake skeletons sitting around the table and they're playing cards. And so it's, it's just, a, it's a cool navigation thing when you're, when you're um, certifying new divers. We'll go down there and, and we'll do a compass course and we'll navigate to the, the skeletons and then come back. And so it's cool for, for new divers to see some of them get a little nervous, wide eyed when, when they see it. But it's a, very, very fun dive. There's always something new. There's grandfather clock down there. There's just different things. And there's actually someone put a statue of Jason Borsi from Friday the 13th down there. <laughs> and the lake, the lake wanted them to pull it back out. And someone went and moved it. So when they went back to get it, it's gone. And so now the, the, the story is you got to go find him. He's somewhere in the lake. So people keep moving him around. So someday <laughs> someone will just stumble upon Jason. <laughs> Good. And I hope it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope it's not me either. And, uh, you yeah. guys, you guys did, uh, you, you did a Halloween special on that, which was perfect, you know, uh, perfect timing yeah. on that. Uh, but the, but you did two videos on that, and the first one the the water clarity is not that not that good, but the second yeah. one is absolutely perfect. And uh, you, you know yeah. you, you see all the guys, and then you you put the uh, conversation blimps on the screen there, where they're all talking about uh, <laughs> playing. That the, was my idea because Steve had about I don't know how many minutes of 
footage of the skeletons. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get bored after like 10 seconds. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm going to start making a conversation between the skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's some conversation bubbles. Yeah. And, and the clarity, so during the summer, the algae blooms in our lakes here in Arizona, and so that's where you see that it's not cold, so you can dive without a wetsuit, but, but it's it's probably, you know, maybe five feet visibility, very green. But during the winter, you, you got to wear a 7 mil wetsuit, but you can see, you know, 30, 35 feet. So that was that difference between those two videos that you could see. Yeah, I figured that they were uh, different times, but... Uh, I tell you guys, it's worth subscribing to their channel and uh, and going there and just seeing that video uh, in and of itself, just to see the scene and think about being underwater. And uh, Jenny mentioned being claustrophobic a while ago, and you, you know, uh, I I was detecting back in the summer underwater, and I I got to noticing that every time that I fanned the water or fan the bottom there that uh, bait fish would come in and and i realized that i was stirring up food that they like to eat and they were just all oh, around man. me you know and oh, I, yeah. and uh they was a big old bluegill and he he looked like he was leaning forward looking in the hole like saying you know uh, what did we find in this one you know and i thought <laughs> man i wish i had a camera over here that could capture that the way that i'm seeing it and as i'm thinking about that i catch something out of the corner of my eye and uh, there's about a five pound smallmouth just nose to nose to me, oh, wow. and he's he's looking and <laughs> and uh, it it scared me or startled me there for uh, for just a little bit, but uh, yeah. yeah, guys, uh, go to their go to trip and dive on YouTube and uh, and check out that one video right there for sure. <laughs> And then I'm so glad you liked it. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I loved it. And you, Jenny, you're coming up with all the good ideas because you're the one that, that put the conversation in there, and it well, does. It's one of those like mid. It's one of those midnight ideas where I'm up till, till midnight editing these videos, and I, and then I think it's going to be really funny, and and then I wake up in the morning. I'm like. I hope that was funny. <laughs> so that makes me feel really good that you enjoyed it. Thank oh, I you. did. I, I really enjoyed it. And like you say, you know, if you're just uh, if you're just running footage of uh, of the skeletons, it is interesting. But then uh, you actually take it to another dimension because they're playing cards <laughs> and they're having a conversation. And and yeah, I liked it. Uh, I sure did. Oh, thank you. And uh, this week, I think this week's video was uh, you guys at the the Grand Cayman. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, what kind? Of, well, we haven't even told everybody what kind of treasure that you guys are hiding at each spot. So let's do that. Yeah. So um, we, we've got these little these little treasure boxes, and we. You know, when you're when you're searching for treasure in the ocean, you you got to find gold coins, right? So we we've got the little the dollar pl- uh, gold plated coins that are in there. Um, right now, they're, you know, they're just they're just small treasures. There's I think there's five coins in there. As we get bigger, we definitely want to we want to put bigger things in the in the treasures and make it more worthwhile for someone. But now it's just that fun of going out and finding something, and they're gold coins, trading them, putting something else in there. So it's been a lot of fun. And you guys started out with a wooden box, didn't you? Why did you have to get away from that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah why don't you explain that, Jenny? Okay, so we were we were trying to be, you know, eco friendly, and and so we were hiding. We found these really cute treasure boxes at Hobby Lobby, and so we got those, and we were we were hiding those just kind of in the woods as we got started, and. Uh, and then we went back up to, no, when we got a video from somebody that found one of our treasures, um, I noticed in the video it was, like, half eaten. <laughs> and so we're like, oh, no, like a squirrel or a mouse or something got into it because we hid it kind of inside a tree trunk area. And so it had something had eaten about half of it away. So we have to. So then we went searching for a metal one that it has to be cute. So we found a really cool, really pretty ones that are that we found them online. So we've been doing metal ones now. And you leave a note in there as well, don't you? We do, yes. We have a little note saying, you know, congratulations for finding the treasure of Trip and Dive. And then we, what we want is um, we have our email address 
take a picture of yourself or a video of yourself with the treasure and replace something inside and rehide it so we can keep it going. And so we've gotten some really cute videos from, from people that have found the treasures. Yeah. And, uh, I thought you was putting real gold in them. My, my, my heart is broken. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Someday. Yeah. As we get bigger, we're hoping. But like right now, it's kind of just a hobby. <laughs> yeah. And we hope to, it would be really fun to put like $100, $1,000 in, in there. Yeah. Well, I couldn't do that. Now, I'm sure that you guys can't either. Uh, <laughs> but, but you hit. Not yet. Uh, and then you do a treasure map, don't you? And uh, you will include that map and they can do a screenshot or something. Or they can email you, and uh, you'll send them that map. Uh, I, I just think it's brilliant what you've done, the, the whole plan of everything. you know. Plus, you guys are getting out to, to go diving. And, and I noticed at Grand Cayman, uh, you're feeding stingrays, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, that was an amazing experience. If, if anyone ever gets a chance to go to Stingray City just to, to interact with them and, you know, in, in, a, in a safe environment. It's safe for the Stingrays and safer for us as well. It's just, it was amazing. It was a great experience. Yeah. And uh, what was the, uh, what was, did y'all see a shark there as well? Yeah, it was a, it was a nurse shark. That, that was actually Jenny that got that footage. So <laughs> I stayed a safe distance away, but yes, I got that. <laughs> well, you know, that's one of the things whenever uh, we got certified, they, uh, they told us, you know, you don't touch anything <laughs> because um, yeah. most of the animals are going to react defensively. And as long mm-hmm. as, as, as long as you don't crowd them and get in their space, you know, everything. But what's it like feeding uh, feeding a stingray? Is that dangerous? Well, <laughs> you want me to take Jenny, the phone? <laughs> yeah, you, you tell, talk about your little experience. With <laughs> no, so they they teach you how, like when the um, when the guides go around, they give you a piece of squid, and you have to close your hand really fast. You'll see in the video, like somebody coming by and giving me. Um, some squid. You have to close it really fast because there's other fish that'll try and come and grab it. Right. Anyways, and then you just hold your fist out, and for hundreds of years, these stingrays have come um, to areas where fishing boats used to drop um, I guess fish, like the leftover yes. fish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so they're used to being fed. Anyway, so then when scuba divers, how did they say a hun- hundreds of years ago? hundred years ago? Scuba yeah. divers has been coming down. Anyway, so you kneel in a circle, and the as soon as they start handing out the squid, the, these stingrays start coming in, and um, you just hold out your hand, and then they say that there's a there's a vacuum, you know, under for their mouth. It's a vacuum that comes up, and they don't have any teeth. But um, I didn't open my hand like fast enough, and so my fingers got stuck <laughs> a little bit. And when you go to like pull them out, there is like cartilage, so. There's a little bit of scratching, but <laughs> there's a little bit of shredding. Yeah, <laughs> not bad. I had, I had one of the stingrays grab on the back of my shoulder. <laughs> it was just kind of <laughs> sucking on my shoulder, and, and it just feels like a little pinch. <laughs> not too dangerous. Yeah, it's not dangerous. It just was. A, it was more scary than anything. But like, <laughs> oh, I just but, I, but I, will, I will throw out though. You know, it, it's. We were in a safe environment with the divers who were experienced. I would never recommend them doing that out and just in the open ocean, right? So it was, right. it was set up for that, yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, normally that that's where fishermen are cleaning their fish and then they're throwing uh, the throwaways out. Uh, we go to, go, in fact, I'm leaving, uh, Friday night. We're going, uh, we're going down to Florida and then we're going over to, uh, Gulf Shores. My wife is actually, uh, in the Bahamas right now on a cruise with our middle daughter. Oh, wow. And so, uh, uh, after they get back from their <laughs> two week quarantine, I hope not. I'm knocking on wood right now oh, yeah. <laughs> that they don't, uh, that somebody doesn't get infected on that boat, but, uh, Anyway, when we fish at Gulf Shores on the pier there, people do that, and uh, you can really catch a lot of stingrays, but you can catch a lot of sharks, too, because... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in fact, hammerhead sharks come into that same area where we were feeding the stingrays, and we were were hoping to see a few, but we we didn't see any that day, but they do come in as well, because 
they've been they've been trained to come in there and, and, and eat on that food as well. Yeah. Well, I'll just say one thing, Jenny. It's a good thing that that wasn't your first dive, getting bit by a stingray and seeing sharks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that would have just yeah, about. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have touched the water. <laughs> yeah, that would have just about done you in. Hey, guys, we're up to another commercial break right now, and we'll be right back in two minutes. You know, T-shirts are a perfect way to get your brand recognized, whether you're talking about a business, a club, a sports team, your YouTube channel, or whatever. But you may have asked, where can I get quality, affordable shirts on demand? Well, I'm glad you asked. Relics Radio uses DetectTees.com for all of our T-shirts, long sleeve shirts, and hoodies. That's D E T E C T. EES.com. Ken and Mark Guthrie make quality shirts that last, they ship quick, and best of all, they're affordable. So if you need customized apparel, then go to DetectTees.com and be sure and tell them that Relics Radio sent you. And I tell you what, Ken and Mark Guthrie, good friends of mine down in Tennessee as well. I hope that everybody fared well down that way. Uh, with those guys but yeah if you need uh, t-shirts if you want hoodies if you want cooling towels you can get your relix radio apparel there and uh, they they furnish a lot of other people in fact uh, trip and dive uh, folks here they need to reach out to uh, uh, detectees.com d-e-t-e-c-t-e-e-s.com and uh, they'll make shirts on demand, and they'll get your brand going, I tell you. And uh, we're talking with uh, Jenny and Steve of Trip and Dive. Uh, they're out of Arizona, but they do a lot of water stuff. And I believe that last week's video that you had uh, really showed the whole family doing a lot more than just diving, right, in Jamaica? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so that was that was one of our when we're on a surface interval, right? No dive in there, but we had a lot of fun zip lining. Um, we went to a place called Heaven Scent, and if you're ever in Jamaica, that was that was awesome. It's just an adrenaline rush, just the, the, the three different zip lines that they do, and just a, a great fun. Um, but then, and then also that Dun, Duns River Falls. So that's where we ended up hiding the treasure was was there. And, um, just a great experience. Fun to get out with the family and explore and have fun. You know, one thing that I was going to ask as I watched that, uh, of course, everybody, uh, everybody that listens to the show and all of them on, on the chat here, they they've always said that I was 150 year old. But uh, I had a birthday <laughs> back in December, so now I'm 151, and I don't I don't know that I could climb that waterfall. It looked. Uh, <laughs> is the footing pretty good? Yeah, it was. They, they they do tell you to stay away. Was it the Black Rocks? I think it was the Black Rocks. I, I slipped one time, but climbing up up the waterfall, it, it always felt pretty safe. I didn't, they have I didn't good know. water shoes. And yeah. They have a guide with you. If you have a big group, they'll send you with a guide, and he'll actually tell you exactly where to step. So you can you can do it really carefully. And, and the guides were great, um, just keeping us all safe. Yeah. So that well, was a fun one. Uh, and I'm sorry to be distracted. I was trying to load the next uh, the next commercial here, and it's not going to load, oh, okay. obviously, because I don't have the Internet. It's American Digger <laughs> Magazine. I'll just go ahead and say that now. That uh, Check out American Digger Magazine. I'm part of that crew. I am the producer of that show, and I'm the co-host on it. And uh, we have a show every Monday night. And if you're not getting American Digger Magazine, it is the premier metal detecting and treasure hunting magazine in the world. They've got the print version, and then they've also got the uh, uh, they've got the digital version. That no matter where you live, you can get it. But then something really special happened at the bottom of that waterfall, didn't it? For your family? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Oh, I was just working on this for hours. I'm like, what happened? Yes, my niece got engaged, so we were on a cruise, and um, we had a few different spots we were stopping, and it was so cute. So the uh, my niece's husband now, but he was all week really nervous trying to figure out the best place to propose, and she had no idea, and so we got word that it was going to be in Jamaica somewhere, 
And then when we hit the falls, we start here, you know, getting the whispers back, like, okay, it's going to be here, it's going to be here. And so Steve turned on his camera, and um, and she was totally unexpecting. She wasn't expecting it at all. So that was really, really cool to see <laughs> that happen and get that on video. It was it, cute. It was. Yeah. It, it was it was funny to watch Logan's face. I mean, he, <laughs> we're all having so much fun. It was a beautiful waterfall, and he just looks like he, he just saw a ghost. He's just white, <laughs> trying to figure out what he's going to do. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, uh, Man Plus River. That's uh, that's Dallas, isn't it? Is his name? Yeah. He is. Yeah. Uh, is he your cousin? Yes, he's my cousin. So we're my mom and his mom are sisters. So that's how that. Of course, everybody knows Man Plus River. He has a phenomenal <laughs> right. uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, and uh, you guys, yeah. you guys went down to Texas and and did a couple of videos with him, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah, and Dallas, Dallas is awesome. He used to live here in Arizona, and I'm, I've been out on a few of his dives here, metal detecting underwater and finding stuff and. Um, he's he's been the one that's been pushing Jenny and I to really. Hey, you guys should start. Jenny you know, should start getting and you know pushing us with ideas. And he's just been awesome. And so um, when we got the opportunity to go out to meet him, it was just it was it was pretty cool. So that was a, a very fun trip, and that's where it really got us into the metal detecting underwater, which I, I've always loved to find stuff out in places, but um, but to actually have your your metal detector it going off you pull out a phone you pull out some classes it's just an amazing feeling so that was that was a great one <laughs> and pull out some sunglasses too right jenny <laughs> <laughs> yes yes oh my gosh i well i think in that when i had gloves i had so much i was carrying and then he handed me classes <laughs> So, not very smart. And uh, I lost them. I lost them. And just to let our listeners know, uh, she had a couple of a pair of sunglasses, and when she got back to shore, she had dropped those. But then you guys, uh, you guys rebounded the next day, didn't you? How many pairs did you find the next day? Oh, we found a lot the next day. Did you find like five, six, Steve? Yeah, I, I even found. Did I find one or two? I, uh, think I found some. Yeah, I think you found. I found <laughs> one or two. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> how cold was it there? Uh, it uh, you guys looked like that you were froze to death, especially the first day. <laughs> it was so. I feel like outside it was forty degrees. But so you, you got to remember, we're from Arizona. We're right? from Arizona. <laughs> it, it probably wasn't that cold for you, but yeah, it was. I think it was. I think it was in the fifties when we got out. No. Oh, okay. So maybe it was the fifties, but the water was really warm because it was a really like a um, what was it? Spring fed or something? I can't yeah. remember. It yeah. was a really warm water, so it was warmer in the water than it was outside. <laughs> but if I'm wet, I'm cold. So regardless, but that was just really cold outside. So I about <laughs> passed out. Yeah. Uh, what got Dallas started in, in all of this? How long has he had his channel going? Do you guys know? I think it's, it's been a few he's years. been going for two years, I think. And, you know, it's cool. As my brother-in-law, I mentioned him at the beginning, we're part of a scoop of post. Um, but we actually certified Dallas to get him um, to get him diving. He, but he has always loved, he's always loved snorkeling in the, in the river, diving and finding things. And so, getting certified just added that second level for him so he could stay in the water and do more things but yeah he's he's just always had a knack for that just yeah. diving and knows where to find things and just everything yeah he's been doing that for years just free diving yeah and yeah. doing the river there's a place in the salt river in the valley that um a lot of tubers just hundreds and hundreds of tubers go um every day and they all drop stuff and there's this place under the bridge where there's like a pocket where it all kind of um like collects there so he's been doing that for years i remember even before he was married for maybe when he was a teenager he'd go out and do that so <laughs> yeah yeah he uh, follow him he finds a lot of great stuff he sure does and uh, <laughs> yes, uh he does. was hoping he's so lucky 
<laughs> do you think it's luck or uh there's a guy told me one time he said when you do it every trip it ceases to be luck <laughs> yeah, okay right? he's so good at it <laughs> there you go uh and i was hoping that uh, i was hoping that all of our system and everything would be up tonight and one of the problems that we're going to have tonight is we can't take calls and uh, I was really looking forward to having Dallas call in, and some of your other your your friends and people that uh, that. But uh, we'll catch him another time, I guess. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm looking down my list right here. Y'all, you guys also went to Cozumel, uh, Mexico, and and dove there, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Cozumel is one of our our favorite go tos, and. Yeah, so it's, um, we always dive at the same outfit, Roberta's Dive Shack, and um, it's just just fun. They're, they're just fun people, great dive masters, and um, and it's always, it's, that's, I think that's the first, well, actually, no, we took Kaylee down to Bonaire, but that's a, just, a, it's an easy, fun place to get to. Um, you can fly right in, and um, it's a great family experience for scuba diving. We love Cosmo. And I was going to ask you a while ago, and uh, we got to talking, and, uh, you know, I'm 151 year old, so I, I forget things. Uh, how many kids do you have? We have three kids. That's what I so, thought. What are their ages and names? Yeah. I know Tyson. So our oldest, oh, yeah, that's right. He's in a lot of them. Our oldest is at college, so she doesn't get to be on all of our adventures. Sadly, she's adulting. So she's, <laughs> she is a junior in, in college, she's 21, and then we have our son Tyson, he's a senior in high school, and then Haley is in, he's a freshman in high school. And they all dive, every one of them. They, they all do. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. They do. And uh, yeah. the, while you were in, in Cozumel, it was uh, it's storming, raining, <laughs> lightning, thunder. <laughs> and, oh. But I, I loved what Steve said, and uh, I've, I've often said it as well. You know, the, uh, you're talking about going out or something, other, you know, and somebody said it's raining. And I said, I'm going to tell you something, guys. It never rains underwater. <laughs> so true yes uh, when we ported we were on a cruise and we ported in Cozumel and we got out and it's, it's just storming all around and everybody that had excursions they canceled because they were all like rained out right right and we were able to go on ours it was so <laughs> peaceful and I was I was really worried that the visibility wasn't going to be good because it was cloudy and raining but it was so magical to get, once you get your head under and it's just peaceful, there's no, um, it wasn't rocky underneath. And then um, the visibility was really clear, even though it was dark outside. Um, that was surprising. And then coming up and seeing the rain hit the, the top of the water and being underneath, that was kind of cool. Yes, it is. And... Um I've got to ask, because, Jenny, I know that you're the one that, that did this. There is a hole at the uh, at the bottom there, and I suspect that it is a fish, but it keeps coming up, and you <laughs> you put another one of those little tags that says peekaboo. What in the world was that thing? <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, that, that little fish. Just oh, like it's a worm. There was well, a worm not, that kept on coming out. It was what was it? What was it, it called? It's actually a fish. It's a, it's a it's a skinny fish, but I'm t- it just slipped my mind my mind what type of fish it is. But they they basically they they dig those little holes. They'll go down. They'll they'll put sand in the mouth and bring it out and spit it, and then they they just pop up and down. I yes, it was so cute. <laughs> but yes, it would just pop up and down, and and it was so cute. But it was it was. Kind of mesmerizing watching it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and uh, you know, and I'm I'm just uh, I'm spending time, you know, uh, over this past week or over this week, uh, catching up and looking at some of your videos, so that we've got uh, some conversation pieces where I know, you know. Uh, something to ask you guys and everything and, and come to it. And I thought, what in the world is that thing? You know? <laughs> I'm not going to yep, touch that. that was, Nobody has to no, tell me not to touch that. 
Yes, it's a fish. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and uh, then uh, another thing that uh, that caught my eye was that uh, watching your videos and everything. Uh, you do some lost recoveries, and uh, Steve, you and Tyson, uh, was that a neighbor or a friend or something that lost something that uh, in Kenyon Lake? Yeah, yeah. So he he's a neighbor of mine. Um, we live in the same neighborhood, and he he was searching on YouTube to find some divers that have ever dove in Canyon Lake. And he came across one of Dallas's videos where I was on it with him. So this is probably a year and a half ago. I, I went out to be uh, Dallas's dive buddy, and and we found someone's GoPro out there. And so he found that. And he's like, "Hey, is that? Are you cousin with Manfred's River?" So he was trying to get a hold of Dallas. I said, "He's actually moved to Austin, but you know, my son and I will go out there." So yeah, we got to go out there, and that you saw how the visibility of that one it was it was probably maybe even a foot in front of us we could barely even see it was just it was just murky as can be but we just we uh, we stuck together so Tyson and I were just kind of arm's length you know so we could see each other but we just we kind of did a search pattern back and forth where he he was out there with us and he kind of pointed in an area where he thought he dropped it we searched for a good 20 minutes and I was just like man we're not going to find anything and right as we're getting ready to go up Tyson just reaches over and he, and he finds the bag. It was that was just the coolest feeling in the world. And the phone was still on. It was just it was cool. <laughs> just the fun. Yeah, it, it was amazing. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, I just uh, recently well, we had uh, we had the guy from the Ring Finders that organization. We had him on as a guest on. Uh, well, first of all, on American Digger Magazine show, and then I had him over on this show here and uh actually joined the ring finders now i haven't done anything yet but i'm looking uh because we've got our houseboat is on dale hollow lake and it's it's a really clear lake and i know that uh, some of those folks uh, are going to be like like we are jumping off the back of their houseboat and everything uh you know whenever they go out on the lake and and uh, tie up along the shoreline somebody's going to lose a ring so uh yeah. you know I'm looking forward to uh, to doing that but how amazing is it and and what's the feeling like whenever you find something that somebody's lost it still works and you're oh. able to put it right back in their hand Oh yeah that that's just the coolest feeling and and people are so appreciative they they want to give you the world I'm like no it's we have fun doing this and it's just I mean to be able to bring something back to someone that they thought was lost forever that yeah <laughs> You can't make that up. It's just a, it's just a good feeling, you know. And there's there's a video that Jenny and I are working on right now that we found a girl's um, phone, and I'll just I'll just throw this out there. It was underwater for a long time, so you have to watch the video to find out how long it was underwater and it still worked. But we were able to get it back to her, and it, it's just it's that's going to be our next video coming out. But it was just it's just a, it's just a cool feeling, you know. And especially when you when you talk to people. And, and they tell you the story, and they tell you how bad they felt when it happened, and then and then to see their excitement that you know, that they've got it back. It's just it's it's a cool feeling. And also in that video, you tell uh, the story of how that phone was lost. And uh, why don't you tell all yeah. the listeners about that? Yeah. So he was he was there. In fact, so it had only been underwater for a couple of days. Cause they were out on I think it was. Saturday that they were out and they were kayaking. He had put his phone in a, in a Ziploc bag, so it wasn't it wasn't in an airtight or anything like that, watertight. But it was in a Ziploc bag, and his dog was kind of moving around on the on the kayak, and he and he dropped his phone, and it, it was just I mean, there's no way he could find it snorkeling around. He tried to guide down, and it was just too dark. Um, and so then he reached out to me that night, I think, and I said, well, Monday's a holiday. Let's, let's go out there on Monday. So, um, he drove us out there and, and, and we went out together. So, but, uh, at least he had it in a Ziploc bag, you know, so that, I think that helped out a lot. Um, but I, I will tell you if anyone's, if anyone's taken their phones in the water, find a good airtight waterproof bag. Cause the one that we're getting ready to, to, um, launch had a really good waterproof casing that it was in and i think that's what saved this last film that we just found and there'll be more details then coming out uh on that as yeah. well yeah in that video well looking forward to to seeing that yeah. 
And, uh, you know, uh, I love the way that the video went because uh, it's kind of like it's the dog's fault. You know, if it hadn't been for the dog, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have lost the phone. Yeah. And then uh, right at the right at the end of it, well, then uh, you guys give the dog a high five. You know, you're yeah. off. You're off the hook now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And then uh, another video was uh, Catalina Island. Uh, I think you just have – no, you you got two on that as well, don't you? Yeah, we do. So Catalina, I, I mentioned at the beginning that I'm part of a post. We actually certify youth, so boys and girls from the ages of 14 to 18. And then every summer we take them out on a, on a trip. So it's kind of a high-adventure trip for them, gets them out. And we, we do a live aboard. And so I go over to Catalina quite often, um, usually every June, uh, end of June, July time frame. And so I know the area very well. Um, and so I thought, you know, this would be fun, really fun to hide a couple of treasures here. Because now whenever we bring these kids out, we're like, hey, go see if you can find this treasure. It'll be something to do while they're there and diving around. So um, that, that was the motivation behind that and, um, and just... You know, and while I was hiding them, I did I did challenge a few of the boys that we were with at that time to see if they could go find it, and they and they did, and it was it was exciting for them. You know, so it's it's it'll be fun when we get the next group out there this summer. And that's got to be rewarding as well to uh, work with young people and uh, and get them acclimated to uh, scuba diving. Uh, get them certified yeah. and and you know we talk about uh we talk about young people in the hobby of metal detecting which uh yeah. mainly is is what got me into diving is uh just so I, I, that I could metal detect underwater but uh we yeah. have uh we have so many and uh I see that we're trying to get a call we cannot take calls tonight Denny I'm sorry uh if you're listening because uh, we're on a makeshift operation here tonight i'm running on an iphone is the only thing that i'm running on so uh, uh impo- i wish i could take calls because we had some that were coming in but we've made mention that uh, uh in the metal detecting community we've got a lot of young people little uh dirt digger and uh, a lot of young people that are just phenomenal hunters and that's the future of our hobby and it's the same with scuba diving isn't it yeah yeah, and I'm I'm just fully getting into metal detecting now, and I I've always loved to go find stuff. When I was young, I was probably six years old. My dad took me out. We lived in um, a town in in Pima. It's in Arizona, so it's Safford area. Um, but there was a lot of Native American um, artifacts and stuff out there, and so we would always be out looking for arrowheads. And one time, I think I was around six years old, I found a tomahawk, and that was the coolest thing to me, you know, this is mine. I found it. And, you know, and it was just to, to go out and find things. So I, I think I got the bug a long time ago of going out and finding things. And so I've, I've been, I've always been a big rock hounder with, with my kids, just going around and finding Apache tears and amethysts and different things. And, and so now, um, you know, metal detecting underwater has really gotten me into that. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to try and take that step up to the land too and, and do some metal detecting on the land too. It'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of metal detecting, uh, what are you guys using? What kind of uh, metal detectors have you purchased now? So the one that we've got, um, it's just a handheld. So it's called the Pulse Guys. Oh. It just it's it's easy. I can hook it on my wrist, um, and I can I can bring it anywhere with me. So I, I would like to move up to a bigger one eventually, but right now, it's, yeah, it's just we're just using the Pulse Dive. I love that little unit. Uh, we, yeah. we, and that's a note to macro unit. And, uh, we had Delic Gagnole from, uh, note to macro. She is the representative. We've had her on the show two or three times. And whenever they were introducing the, uh, the nomads and everything, and I mentioned her to her on, on one of the shows that, uh, I would really like to try that, uh, that pulse dive so she sent me one and i did a couple of videos uh and i, I love it i really do uh yeah. th- there's one problem with it uh that uh if you're in a spot that has a lot of sand 
and uh, shell and stuff like that, the target can be hard to pinpoint with it. I don't have as much trouble as as some people that I've seen on video, so I just take a pinpointer with me as well. And if I get in that situation, I can I can just pull the pinpointer out. Now the the pulse dive is a detector, or it is a pinpointer, but you can't you can't transition from one to the other underwater. So uh, I just had uh, an extra. But yeah, I, I I love that, and uh, it's got a uh, it's got a cord on it that uh, you can just clip to you, and after you get your signal, you can just kind of throw that thing in the water. It's not going to go anywhere. Just yeah. throw it around your side, you know. And uh, yeah, I, exactly. I noticed in the promos that you guys sent, uh, both of you had a pulse dive in your hand, right, Jenny? Yes. Yes, I'm addicted too now. <laughs> it was actually our trip to texas with dallas when he showed us because i that's the one i used of his and i i don't know every time you hear that beep and you pull something up i i caught the bug too <laughs> nothing nothing compares to it absolutely nothing compares no because so uh, you you there's just an anticipation i don't care if you're underwater or you're on land you know you're you're working the detector and i you know one thing that uh that really struck me is first of all it's harder to grid underwater than it is on land and uh plus you don't have as much time underwater as you do on land uh i went hunting uh i guess it was day before yesterday uh maybe yesterday and uh anyway uh, we hunted five hours. Well, it's pretty hard to do that, you know, underwater uh, because yeah. of the of the limitations of of time and uh, and everything, you know, and uh, the stuff that you have to watch uh, about build up in your blood and everything. So, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, the the nitrogen content and nitrogen everything. Nitrogen bubbles. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, but. I love it. And whether you're under the water or you're on land, you hear that beep, there's anticipation. You have no idea what it's going to be. And, uh, you know, it's like Mel Fisher. Uh, his motto used to be, today is the day. And I think that every day that I go out, <laughs> today is the day that I'm going to find something so amazing. And, uh, yeah. you know, it doesn't always happen, but uh, I love it. And, I'm, yeah. I'm as addicted to it as I can be. I've I've got the bug, and I've <laughs> I've had it since 1975. Whenever I got my first oh, metal detector, so you know. And even when you find something like you know that goes off, and and you dig down, it's a, a little tab. It's like, oh well, at least I'm cleaning up the river here. Yeah. So even when you find nothing, at least you're doing something productive. And yeah. and then every once in a while, when you pull up something really cool, like sunglasses or somebody's phone, or you know, that makes it all it just it's a bonus. So yeah. Yeah. I kind of go yeah, into it like that. And, and and what's cool about it is with the metal detector, you can find something that's been hidden for years. You know, in, in this video that we're working on, I mean, this where I found this this girl's phone. We've we've been certifying people there for the. For a long time and diving right over this spot, and then all of a sudden, now that I've got the pulse find, you know, I was able to to find it under the under the silt and stuff. And so, it's just it's it's awesome. It just uh, um, there's something about that too to find something that's been hidden for a long time. It's like oh, that's that's a, an extra an extra joy when you find that. <laughs> yeah, and you guys can't see the chat, and I don't have time to really look at it much. But Nelson Salter said, "Did he say 1875?" No, I said 1975. <laughs> that's just the way that they do me all the time, like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, you're able to. And let me tell you what I do on uh, on my videos. Now we hunt a lot of Civil War sites. Uh, we're lucky we've got a lot of Civil War activity in our, our area. We also have some colonial sites where we can find flat buttons and Spanish silver, uh, find a few large scents, not many of them. And, but there are some great finds that we can find. But then we hunt a lot of turn-of-the-century houses, and you may find uh, you know, a silver mercury or uh, a silver Roosevelt or a Washington Quarter. Mm. 
uh, you know, those are those are nice to find. But then uh, you find uh, maybe a suspender clip or a, an old hair barrette that was a long time back. What I started doing a couple of years ago was I started doing a history clip in just about every one of my videos. And I will take the simplest find. Uh, a lot of times now sometimes you know you'll take you'll have a great find now uh, a hunting buddy of mine he found a, a spanish silver that was a really rare one and of course that's a good history clip that you do but i've also done just uh uh hair barrettes and things like that the goody hair barrette and just find the history of those old mm-hmm. items and it it makes the find oh, yeah. come alive, and it really makes it. Well, I tell you what, it's like Jenny. It's like you putting the conversation at the at the uh, skeleton <laughs> crowd there. At the skeleton. Yes, yeah. I watched your video. It must have been. Did you post it yesterday? Uh, the the, I, uh, was it the buttons or the coins? Uh, mine comes out. Mine it, comes you know, out on on. Up. Yeah, mine comes out on Tuesdays. And, uh, yes. Okay. Well, the one that you posted last, I watched that, and it was. I love the history portion that you're putting in there. Well, I was going to make a suggestion. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's not unique to me. Now, there are a lot of people that have watched my videos and they've started doing that, and then uh, I've had some of them on the show, and they would say, you know, I stole that idea from you, and I said, well, you know, I've seen <laughs> other people do the same thing, but I was going to suggest that uh you know that's another element of of the video uh idea is to bring in as much history as you can because I, that's what pushes every one of us to want to do what we do is to reach back and yeah. find out more about our past right yeah i love that yeah yeah that's awesome yeah definitely what is it uh what uh, what all was involved in you getting able or getting to the point that you can certify divers? That was quite an ordeal, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So so you first become an open water diver. Um, that, that's that first certification. So you can go dive in. Typically, you're going to stay in a recreational dive um, limit of sixty feet. You don't want to go lower than that. Um, and then the next is you go to advanced diver. So an advanced diver, you're going to go down to 100 feet. You can go all the way to 130 feet in, in depth. But you're going to learn how to go down to a deeper, a deeper depth. And learn that you go through your air a lot faster. You learn that your mind starts to think a little bit differently. Colors change. Just you know, there's more pressure on you. Um, so you learn that. Then there's navigation dives that you learn how to do. Um, search and recovery dives, those are always a lot of fun. In fact, on my, on my advanced diver course, my brother-in-law and I were out at Lake Pleasant and we were doing my search and recovery dive and we came up for a surface interval and a guy came up to us and said, Hey, I was out here last week and I lost my bolt propeller. Do you guys think you could find it? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so he said, it was right in this area. So we, we set a, a search pattern. And he and I, we just did a U search pattern, and we went back and forth through this. And, and I found I found the propeller. It was just it was so awesome. It was on my certification course, and I found it. So we got it back to him. He was, he was very happy. Um, but so you do you do that. So you, you become an advanced diver for next, and then you go on and become a rescue diver. And that's a really fun course because you, you do CPR training and all this, but you learn how to really help people in the water and do things um but that that training course is a lot of fun and then from um rescue diver and um, we went on to dive master so i'm a dive master now i'm, I'm actually looking at becoming a, an instructor as well um but for the time being I'm, I'm just helping out as a dive master and having a lot of fun with it um but then once you become an instructor then of course now i can i can actually instruct people on my own now i have to instruct people with with a, with an instructor as well so right but uh, may i interject here yes i just was thinking something so i've had a lot of my friends that have um gotten certified from my brother-in-law and steve and steve seems to have a gift of calming people down because <laughs> like a lot of people will say if it weren't for steve I would have never been able to get through this certification. And so my friends have all dubbed him as the scuba whisperer 
<laughs> he's really calm and he keeps people very calm underwater. Like you always, if you're getting certified, you want to have somebody that's like, just can help you breathe. <laughs> yeah, so just... We like to call him scuba whisperer now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, uh, that's a good quality to have. And, uh, you know, uh, and you most of the time you get yourself in trouble whenever you you're not calm because when you're not calm you're not thinking straight and you're not trying to solve a problem the problem overwhelms you and uh, uh, you know if you can a lot of times if you can just calm down and uh, and deal mm-hmm. with the situation it's not as bad as as what you thought but that's not only true in scuba diving that's life isn't it. <laughs> Yes, yes, because I tend to be a little bit anxious, and he's super calm, so we're a good match. <laughs> I'm always like looking at him to be like, Jenny, calm down. Yeah. Well, in, in, in our dive master course, we had to do things. We'd go down to the bottom of the pool, and we had to, with our dive buddy, we had to switch BCDs, but breathing off of one regulator. So... One person would breathe, hold their breath as, as they're moving, and then would breathe. And it was just so, like, as through the certification courses, you really are tested on how you can stay calm in, you know, scary situations. Your hair's off, or there's a situation you got to figure out how to just stop and think. And, and what I found in, in scuba diving, what I try to tell everybody is, like, if you start to panic, just focus on your breath. Just breathe. It just deep breath in deep breath out you know and it just it brings it just brings it back all right i can breathe i'm okay and then you can start thinking about stuff get that oxygen back up to your brain so you're not just freaking out so yeah he needs to do a scuba yoga class under the water (laughs) 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 that's not a bad idea right there i tell you uh, yeah, just uh, deal with all of life's problems. Well, that's kind of what I did whenever I was doing the swim test, and they told me I had to tread water. I told him, I said, I don't know that I can tread water, but uh, he said, I don't care how you stay on top of the water. And I said, well, I can float. And so I just laid back and, uh, you know, just took real deep breaths because you expand your lungs, and that keeps you at the top of the water more. And then from that full expansion, I would just exhale a little bit and then and then fill them back up and uh, got into a pattern like that. And uh, uh, to tell you the truth, I thought there for a minute I was going to go to sleep because I just relaxed so (laughs) much. And the more that you relax, the more you're capable of doing, especially whenever you're talking about, uh, you know, being in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Life lessons, finally. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where is the favorite place you've gone scuba diving? Well, I just uh, I just got started into it this last year. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, so Del Hala is uh, all that I've done. Uh, and we've done uh, some snorkeling and hookah in the rivers because around some of the uh, Civil War locations here, the river won't be four to six foot deep. And, uh, you know, we can take hookah rigs. And uh, and, and uh, Tim Henderson, our, uh, our dealer sponsor here, uh, he's the one that got me into that. And then uh, all of a sudden I seen that, oh, I, you know, I've got to take this to the next level. I've got, I've got to be a scuba diver, you know. And so that's kind of what uh, got it all going. But uh, I'm looking uh, starting uh, this next week to, uh, to do more and more because I'm going to, I'm going to Florida and then I'm going to, uh, to Gulf Shores. And uh, don't know, uh, you know, don't know what what uh, all that's going to involve. That that was a question that I was going to ask. Is uh, if you're, you know, if you're in like sixty, I looked today and the water temperature was sixty one degrees, and the thickest suit that I've got is a five mil. Is that enough to swim in uh, sixty one degree water? Um, you, yes. I mean, you will start to get cold, though, but it, it'll definitely take the edge off for you. Um, seven, seven mil would be ideal, but um, five mil will, will certainly work for that. Yeah. And then so uh, we were last last or two Saturdays ago. We were out at Lake Pleasant. And it was fifty three degrees, and I had a seven mil wetsuit. Um, 
I got a little cold by the end, but um, I was able to survive that with a 7 mil at 53. So if you're 61 with a 5 mil, you should, you should be all right. Yeah. Uh, you don't use a dry suit any? No, I would like to get one. I, I, I haven't invested yet, um, but um, someday I will. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I just I've had to sneak around over the last year, get, getting all my stuff together, you know, uh, to kind of yeah. keep my wife from knowing how much money that I've spent. And I hope she's not on the cruise listening to the show right now. But I told her, I told somebody last week, I said my biggest fear is is that I'm going to die, and then my wife is going to sell all my stuff for what I told her I paid for it. <laughs> yes, Steve has a whole closet dedicated to scuba gear. It's a whole, whole room. closet. Okay, it's a whole room, and he's got all BCDs for us, wetsuits, anything. <laughs> I'm like, what is yeah, the hobby? It's very the family. The family doesn't have to worry about anything. I've got it all set for them. I've got all their everything separated by everyone's name and everything. So yeah, whether we need it or not. Yeah, whether you need it or but the, you know the good thing about you is that you've got the whole family involved in it, and so. Uh, yeah. there's there's not a lot of argument uh what kind of uh regulators are you guys using you know we use um i i personally have a cressy um and it works really good but we we use a lot of sherwoods as well in our training certification classes with people and those work well um but yeah the, the ones that that i've got for me and my family they're cressy is the brand yeah uh i've got a crazy and then i've also got uh how do you i think you say it maris uh i've got uh, yeah, yeah yeah i've got that and then i've got a crazy bcd and then i got a sherwood bcd that is uh, a back end yeah. flight and i really like mm-hmm. it because it it planes you out in the water puts you horizontal real easy and uh, it's oh, an, yeah. and it's an integrated suit as well my other one i have to uh, i have to wear a weight belt with it but uh yeah. one thing that uh that I've worked on this week is is uh getting the right amount of weight with a wetsuit on because uh, you know if you go in without a wetsuit and then you put a wetsuit on you're more buoyant there and you've got to put on more mm-hmm. weight. Uh is there a formula there that the percentage wise as far as the meal number of a suit? There is, and it's slipping my mind right now. But because um, usually it all it, it varies by people. Just cause some people are a little bit more nervous and they're holding their breath, and so they they float more too. And so I've just always kind of so I typically someone that's two hundred to two fifty. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in if they're in a seven mil wetsuit. I'm gonna give them twenty pounds of weight. It's just kind of a rule that that's been easy for me and it works pretty well like someone my my weight so you know between 100 and 170 and 190 ish um, about 16 pounds if they're in a seven mil wetsuit but if i don't have a wetsuit on at all i can go with just um eight pounds yeah i'm fine so so it, it's it, when i put a seven mil wetsuit on I, I double my weight yeah that i've been using well, that's not going to be the case with everybody, though. It, it depends on your weight, and it depends on uh, your breathing uh, style, the way you said, you know. It depends on a lot of things. Yeah. So I guess there's no hard and fast formula for figuring it out. Uh, I've got mine with my wetsuits uh, to where, you know, I'm pretty neutral and feel real comfortable with. Uh, of course, when you get out of uh, fresh water and you get into salt water, it's completely different, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything, uh, anything else that uh, that we failed to cover? The, that uh, what's on the horizon for you guys? Yeah, um, you know, no one has found any of our treasures underwater yet. The only treasures that have been found are ones that are out on hikes, and so um, we're, we're hoping for someone to find one and, and get a video from one of our underwater treasures. It'll be really exciting for us. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, we, this next week, we're going out to Maui, so it's spring break here, and we're taking the family out to Maui, so we're going to, we're going to, we're going to try and do both. We're going to hide some treasures, but we're also going to, we're taking the pulse dive, and we've uh, been uh, studying out some waterfalls and cliffs where people jump, and so we're going to go down and see if we can find some stuff as well. So we're, we're looking forward to that trip. Um, last week, we also hid one 
that'll be coming out. We hid one in Puerto Vallarta. We were there. Yeah, it's true. Steve and I. So we're still we're going to keep on hiding them anytime we go places, and so it would be really cool to. It's it's just awesome to get back videos when people find it. So if if we can get some ones that are found underwater, that'd be even better. Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine so. And, uh, you know, like I said, that, that's really what turned me on to you guys. I, I watched it, watched, uh, one or two of your videos and I was really impressed with, uh, with what you did. And I immediately knew I wanted to have you on the show and, uh, and reached out to you because it's something that interests me. You know, it, it, it probably doesn't interest all of our listeners, but we kind of want to break it up and, uh, have as much variety as we can. And uh, I just thought that you guys would be a, a good pick. Let me ask you, uh, Jenny, you do most of the video editing. What is your philosophy on that? Oh, well, I tell Steve to get it all in order for me first. <laughs> so I do the fine editing. And right now I'm just using iMovie. I have a Mac. And so um, I know I'm really familiar with iMovie. So uh, it is interesting. Like I've made a lot of videos. Um, in the past and it's interesting making videos and just doing a little fine tuning it how long it takes to edit a video i know it and i'm kind of a perfectionist and so i i i still am surprised at how many hours i'll put in but it helps me appreciate all the other videos out there that people put together and and i love learning um, little tricks. Uh, anytime I get stuck and I want to figure out how to, you know, put speech bubbles in my video, and <laughs> iMovie doesn't do that. Yeah. And so going on to YouTube, figuring out how people have been able to do that, and I'm learning a lot, and I really enjoy the fine editing process. And then, um, and then sometimes, you know how sometimes people will have music for their uh, underwater. Right. Videos. And we found that some people don't prefer, they, they prefer to just hear no music and just the relaxing underwater, the bubbles. So, um, you have a preference. I think we, we put a little, um, poll on one of our last videos. Like, do you prefer music or do you prefer to hear the natural water? Yeah. Well, what was the result of that? Um, I'm interested in hearing, uh, the result of that poll. I need to. I need to go look. I just remembered. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what the result was. Oh, I, you, I remember asking that, but. Yeah, you lucky person. You've got internet. You can just reach over and do something that I can't do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Uh, all yeah. of all of my water stuff is uh, on YouTube. I have playlist and uh for the special stuff, like if I review a product, I've got a playlist for that. And then uh, the underwater stuff, water hunting, I've, I've got that. And uh, I, I use a different kind of music for underwater scenes. And I've thought about, you know, getting it real low in the background. And, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, a lot of times if you're – when you hear – breathe, and I'm going to ask you about your camera setup and everything here in a minute. But a lot of times whenever you, you're catching the breathing through a regulator, uh, I don't like the way that that sounds. If, if you could just mm – -hmm. if you were off from somebody, the, the problem is is that you're getting your breathing too much, you know. And uh, – I, I just don't like that. And so I will cut that audio down and I will blend the music and stuff in, which I like a whole lot better. Now, if I was 10 or 15 feet from you, I'm sure the bubbles coming out of your regulator would really sound good doing that. But, uh, you know, it, it depends on the situation, I think. But what about... Uh, okay, I just looked it up. Okay. It said, what? Um, so far, I, it doesn't tell me how many people have voted, but so far it's 100% people say, yes, it's relaxing. I asked, do you like the natural underwater sound? Yes, it's relaxing, or no, I'd rather hear music. And 100% <laughs> yes, it's relaxing. Interesting. <laughs> it is interesting, and and I like. And you are a perfectionist, aren't you? I mean, you're trying to get down to the nitty gritty of all of it. <laughs> what kind of uh, what kind of uh, cameras are you guys using to film underwater? Certainly not your iPhone. So, oh, yeah, right. Um, just GoPro. So I've got a GoPro Seven Black and a GoPro Five Black, 
and I've got filters that I that I do so if I'm in the ocean or typically if it's the blue water I've got a red filter um, when we were down in Puerto Vallarta last week I used a purple filter because it's a little bit more greenish but then um, then when we bring it pull it into iMovie we just do the white balance so that so a lot of times the filter will pull it out just perfect but sometimes there's still it's still a little bit off and so if you do a, a white balance in iMovie it, it pulls the colors out a little bit better a friend of mine that does uh he does a lot of river hunting and uh i've got i don't know i've got the uh gopro hero i don't know what number it is a, a five or a four or something but the problem that that i had with it was whenever you had the case on it to go underwater uh the audio was so low on it and uh so yeah. he told me he said I asked him what he was using because he'd go underwater, and then when he'd come out of the water, I mean, the audio was perfect underwater and out of water. And I said, what are you using? He said, he's using a GoPro Session. Uh, It's a very, very small GoPro, and that's all I'm using now. And it actually has two mics, a front mic and a back mic. And I use it on land and underwater as well. If it's windy, it will use the mic away from the wind. And... uh, you know, I I think that I got mine on Amazon. I got a reconditioned one, give about a hundred dollars for the thing, and uh, I am yeah. really and you know GoPro is not a sponsor of the show, but I would highly recommend that GoPro session. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. I've looked at that and I've, I've thought about getting one. So to hear because that does bother me too. Um, the sound when you're out of water with the casing, it's just, it's muffled. muffled. It is. Yeah, I don't love it. So, and you know, I'll check that out. Water, uh, or sound that is underwater. I mean, you can hear so much better. You can't tell where things are coming from, but you can hear so much better. Yeah. But then whenever you come out of the water, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, I, well, I'd have to doctor the audio completely, and I mean, really run it up to uh, to get you know a good quality for a video, and you know, uh, having a background in broadcasting, you know, I'm I'm a stickler for audio. I want it to be the very best that it can be, and uh, the session is a perfect uh, pick for that. I mean, it's perfect. That's awesome. So. It, do you have a, a waterproof casing for the session, or is it waterproof down to a certain certain level? It's waterproof itself, uh, and okay. I, I don't know how far down. Uh, I'd, yeah. ha- I'd have to go back and look at that, but it's it's waterproof in itself, and it, it doesn't have a waterproof case. It's just uh, it's just uh, it's waterproof, and uh, the microphones are are right there, and it's got a little trap door, and you just pull your sd card out and charge it through that and put it back in i've had no trouble and i've had mine almost a year now okay great yeah. done it's in the cart steve <laughs> <laughs> i wish my what wife me about something like that. i wish my wife would so, I, yeah i wish my wife would do that for me <laughs> I never know what to get Steve for his birthday because he is one of those that, like, if he wants something, he figures it out. He goes and searches it out and gets it. And so, like, oh, whenever I hear something (laughs) that he doesn't have. So, thank you. Thank you for the birthday idea. Yeah, there you go. And and I didn't charge you a dime for that either. (laughs) Uh, Not a dime. Uh, before you get off, uh, anything else that you guys want to add uh, that we haven't touched on that you thought that you might want to say tonight or share with the listeners? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any place that would be really cool to hide a treasure, you can email us. Like, if there's any hikes. We are kind of based west, but we love traveling, so. Yeah. Well. If there's yeah. a great place, email us some ideas. Uh, I'll just challenge. I'm going to challenge everybody to go to your YouTube channel and uh, subscribe. They've got 3.1 K subs right now, 3,100 plus, and uh, they make great videos. They do a good job, and uh, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, You're not. They're not real long videos. They are exactly uh, the way they ought to be. They they keep your interest, and uh, they are well put together. 
and you're just going to enjoy it. So go over there and sub them. As I said, it is in the description here. But you guys, uh, and and uh, take Jenny's challenge. If you can think of somewhere to uh, to hide a treasure, then uh, reach out to them and and tell them. Now, don't say go put one in the uh, in the Statue of Liberty's hand. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be legal. Yeah, be, it's got to be legal and it's got to be realistic. But it's just a wonderful <laughs> idea, and uh, you know. We throw these videos out there, and there's just a sea of people that are doing that. And you got to stand out some way. And I think that this really made you guys stand out. Well, thank you. Yes, we appreciate it, all the subs and, and support uh, so far. There's been so many positive um, supporters. I It's kind of scary putting a video out sometimes because you don't know if people are going to rip it apart. Or just, and so far, just all the comments are, uh, have been so positive and, and it's been encouraging to just keep going because you get to a point and you're like, why am I spending all this time on this? But, but mostly it's so, it's so fun for us. And so I want to keep, we want to keep doing it and it helps, um, when we get a lot of encouragement, it helps us to keep on going. So thank you. We appreciate that. Oh, you're doing, you're doing a, a, a fantastic job. Uh, I love your family. I love the whole situation that you have. I love your videos, and uh, uh, it's just a joy to watch it. And and uh, eventually, you will have to transition and and don't fall into the trap that we all on YouTube fall into, where you go to looking for numbers and uh, the number of views and the number of subscribers. And oh, I wish I could have forty one thousand views on this. Uh, sometimes it'll happen. Sometimes it won't happen. And don't worry about all that. Just do what you do. Document it. Put it out there. Forget it. Go to the next adventure. And uh, mm-hmm. you're you're documenting your life and what you're doing. One of these days, your kids are going to go back and look at that after you're gone, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And uh, that's kind of my philosophy now, you know. Uh, sometimes I find really good stuff, and sometimes I find nothing but junk. It doesn't matter. I try to do what I can do. Uh, you yeah. know, you can only put on there what uh, what you put on. But you guys are very fortunate. You go to some absolutely beautiful places to dive. And uh, throwing the whole hidden treasure thing in is just uh, – I, I I think it's a great idea. And uh, Steve, you're married to a genius. Oh, I know, I know. I, I definitely married way up. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, he keeps me grounded. <laughs> otherwise, I'd be flying in the clouds. So yeah. Thank you for keeping me down. <laughs> hey, hey, Steve. She uh, she went to the Amazon cart and put you in a uh, GoPro session. You're going to now have to go into the cart and and put her on an extra size uh, hood because her head just swelled up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, I, I really do appreciate uh, uh, Jenny and, and Steve, you guys coming on, and uh, you've been great guests. Uh, stay on the line. I'm going to close the show out, and uh, we will say our goodbyes. And uh, your the phone will still be hot, so if you don't mind, just be silent until until I close okay. it out. And then uh, thank we, you for having us on. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. This is great. Thank you so much. And by the way, I will uh, share the show. You'll be able to hear the commercials and everything. And uh, I don't think the audio is going to be that bad. Uh, I think everybody was uh, going to be able to hear it. It's not as good as it would be if ever if all of our system was up but it is what it is and we did get the show in so we've maintained a perfect record and uh, but anyway stay on the line and i will uh, catch you in just a second and thanks to everybody that did join the show tonight really do appreciate it as i said uh, internet is completely out and i ran everything off of a hotspot on my phone here tonight 
we made it work and uh, we had phenomenal guests i apologize that we couldn't have any callers in tonight but uh and I, as i said i will be in florida and then in alabama uh, i don't know about next week's show i've reached out to jeff lubert to see if he will host the show uh, if not i may run, have to run an archive or something uh this next week but then i'll be back in a couple of weeks and uh i won't be on uh, american diggers relic roundup this monday night but go over and listen to those guys i'm sure that they're going to have a great guest and uh i'll see you when i get back Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Relics Radio. We really do appreciate it. Be sure and join us live every Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern here on Spreaker. Or you can catch the archive show at Relics Radio on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Apple Podcast, and many other podcast outlets. Relics Radio is also syndicated on the Cutting Edge Radio Network and is broadcast around the world. Please take a minute and hit the like button and be sure and follow us so that you get notifications of all of our upcoming broadcasts. Be sure and visit Digging with Seven on YouTube and check out the Relics Radio Facebook group page. If you'd like to get in touch with us, then send an email to relicsradio at outlook.com. We'd love to hear from you. And we hope that you'll join us next Thursday night Until then, get out there and dig some history.